Welcome back. I'm here again today with my 1984 Honda Big Red. I'm going to do a valve adjustment on it today, and this valve adjustment will work on just about any three-wheeler, four-wheeler, single-cylinder type of vehicle. The specs will be different. You'll have to look that up. But this, this will work for any type of single-cylinder four-stroke. And I'm not going to go quite by the service manual. It's going to be a little bit different. When you're making valve adjustments, you need to go by the manufacturer's recommended temperature. Honda recommends checking the valves on these engines at under 90 degrees. I think the last time I set them, that was probably about 80. Today, it's maybe 60. Let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is take the seat off. There's a lever over here on the left-hand side of the three-wheeler. You just lift that up, and then the seat lifts up. And we'll just set it back here on the rack, because that won't be in the way there. The next thing that we're going to need to do is remove this gas tank so we can get at the intake valve. Now make sure that your fuel is turned off, which on these Hondas means that the lever is vertical. And then the tube, the fuel line, it may drip a little bit, just disconnects. After you have the fuel line disconnected, we move up to the single bolt on the tank that holds the tank down. We remove that bolt and washer and set them off to the side in a safe spot. Now to remove this tank, all we do is we lift up on the back, which releases the rubber and then slide backwards a little bit and lift out of the way. Now that the gas tank is out of the way, this is our valve cover for the exhaust. And over here from the other side behind the spark plug wire right in there, that is the cover for the intake. These are a 24 millimeter, but before we use, before we remove them, make sure there's no dust or dirt that's gonna fall into the engine. I'm going to just go ahead and use some brake clean to clean it off. Now that no dirt is going to fall in, yours may need more cleaning than that. This one was actually in pretty good shape. We break that loose with the wrench. Unscrew it. And set it off to the side. Then we come around here to the intake side. and do the same thing and set it off to the side. So the way I'm gonna do this, this is the exhaust valve I'm showing you right now. We're gonna watch this and I'm gonna roll this engine over by the pull starter until it just barely starts to open the exhaust valve. All right, so right there, the exhaust valve actually went a little bit farther than I was hoping for. But now that our exhaust valve is starting to open, the intake valve is at a point where it can be set. I'm now ready to set the intake valve latch. In order to give better access to the valve, I'm going to take this ignition wire and move it out of the way. The valve lash specs on a, on a big red are two thousandths of an inch for the intake and exhaust. This particular Big Red has a 200X valve train. These specs on it are three thousandths for the intake, four thousandths for the exhaust. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and split the difference and I'm gonna set this one up for two and a half thousandths. So I have a feeler gauge that is, if you can read that, two and a half thousandths of an inch. Now because of where this one's at, I'm actually going to have to bend this feeler gauge, which I don't love doing, but it'll work. So I bent my feeler gauge. I'm going to take this feeler gauge and try to slide it down in between the tip of the rocker arm and the valve, which is not being easy to do. So there's my feeler gauge inserted between the valve and in between the valve guide or in between the valve stem 
and the rocker arm. And this one is actually just a little bit snug and difficult to move. So we're right there. The valve lash on the intake side seems to be pretty good. So now because this one was good, we'll rotate it over and if I don't have to and if I don't have to adjust the uh, exhaust, I'll at least walk you through how it works. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the pull starter, I'm going to pull this engine over, and I'm going to watch the intake valve, and I'm going to let it open all the way, and then I'm actually going to adjust the exhaust valve right there. The intake valve just opened, so the intake valve is now at the end of its cycle, which allows us to adjust the exhaust valve. Now for this exhaust valve, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to kind of split the difference between the two, and I'm going to use a 3 thousandths feeler gauge for the exhaust. Same thing, I'm going to try to... Same thing as on the intake valve. I'm going to slide this feeler gauge in between the exhaust valve and the rocker arm and this one actually feels pretty good as well there should be just a very slight amount of drag and no play up or down so if you do have to adjust these what you'll do is you will take this 10 millimeter nut and loosen it and then the flathead screw in the center, you will move that either in or out until you get the desired valve lash. And again, that's going to be to where you can take your feeler gauge and just barely slide it in between the two. So this one's got some pretty good drag on it. That's what you want. You want the feeler gauge to not really move super free. You want it to move but you want it to drag a little bit as it moves through there and that's what this one's doing so I'm gonna leave it alone if you need to make adjustments what you'll do is you'll take a 10 millimeter loosen this outer knot adjust it to where this is I usually go just a touch on the tight side because it seems to loosen up a little bit when you tighten the jam nut back down and then you will snug the jam nut back down in your valves and then you will recheck after you snug the jam net back down, you will recheck with the feeler gauge again, but it should go through the spot between the rocker arm and the valve tip. So now what we'll do is we'll take our caps, take a look at them, make sure they're clean, nothing weird going on, and thread them back into the engine. After they're snugged up, take our 24 millimeter. You do not want to over tighten these. These are also of a design that will break if you over tighten it, much like the ones on the rear axle. So we go good and snug. You may want to keep an eye on them for a little bit to make sure they're not going to come loose, but that one's good. Move over to the intake valve. Same thing here, just snug. The frame head stay. The frame is a little bit in the way of the wrench though. Take our spark plug wire, plug it back in, put it back in its clip. Reinstall our gas tank. Sliding it forward onto its mounts. Then this rear rubber piece drops in. We grab our bolt and our washer. Snug that up. Again, that's a little tiny bolt. You don't need to go crazy on it. 
grab our seat, put our seat back on, move down to the side here, install our fuel line onto the fuel valve. And if you're going to ride, you can go ahead and turn that to the on position. And this one actually starts really quite well, even cold. And though I didn't actually have to adjust the valves on this one, that is the procedure you would follow. You would just need to actually make the adjustments with that 10 millimeter jam nut and set screw. Thanks for watching and I'll see you later. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share, all that good stuff. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you later.